Hi everyone, Web Dunce here. So in this tutorial we're going to learn how to make this twist ring, or you may call it a rope ring. We'll start off by opening a new file. I'm going to use the small objects millimeters template that comes standard with Rhino 7. We'll start off in the front viewport. We'll lay in the sizing circle. I'm going to give it a diameter of 16.51, which is, if I recall correctly, a US size 6. I'm going to move the curve seam down to the bottom and snap it to the bottom quad and hit enter. And we'll offset the sizing circle by one millimeter. Okay, next I'm going to lay in a point here at the bottom quad of the outer circle and then I'm going to move that point up 0.5 millimeters. We'll set another point also at that snap it to the oops snap it to that bottom quad and we'll move it down by 0.5 millimeters. Then we're going to run the helix command and up here in the command line we'll click on the around curve option it's asking us to select a curve. The curve that we're going to select is this outer circle. This is the curve that the helix is going to spin around. Okay, I want to make sure that I've got six turns, but you can set it if you, you, you can experiment with the number of turns, of course. And we get a chance to set the diameter. Uh, uh, to do that, I'm going to snap to this point here. And now we have our helix. I'm going to do this all over again. I'm going to select the helix command, click on a round curve. I'm going to select this same curve, but we're going to snap to the other point. And now we have a double helix uh, that goes around this curve here. And now I'm going to select these two, these two uh, double helix lines. We're going to run the pipe command on that. You can set the radius to 0.9 millimeters or the diameter to 1.8 millimeters. Let's switch into shaded view so we can see that better. Okay, now I'm going to select these two pipes and Boolean them together. And I would like to soften the edge uh, between the intersection of these two pipes. So I'm going to run the fillet command. I'm going to set the radius to 0.25. I'm going to click on chain edges and click on one of those edges there. I'm going to hit enter and chain edges again and click somewhere else on the there's one more edge that runs around the ring. I'm going to click on a part of that and uh, then hit enter one, two, three times. It takes it a minute to process that. A lot longer than I would have expected actually. Um, now what we need to do is clip uh, this this ring kind of goes inside the sizing circle. If we bring up the front view in wire wire view you can see the sizing circle the the pipes go into it in some places and we need to cut those out. So there's two different ways in the front view you can select the pipes click on the wire cut command and then Click on that sizing circle, hit enter once, twice, and then uh, whatever's highlighted in yellow is what will be deleted. If the inside uh, of the sizing circle is not highlighted in yellow, if the outside of the circle is highlighted in yellow, just click somewhere on the canvas and it will inverse that selection. Hit enter again uh, to complete the command and it will remove that part. That's one way that you can do that. The other way would be to use Boolean difference. So you would select that sizing circle and extrude it out a little bit, making sure to go past the width of the ring. Select the ring, select Boolean difference, click on the cylinder that you just made, hit enter, and then delete the cylinder if it's still there. Okay, now I want to soften these sharp edges up as well. So we'll run the fillet command on those. I'm going to click on the fillet command. I'm going to set the radius to 0.2 and then box select the entire ring. 
because those are the only sharp edges on this object, that's all that will be selected for the fillet command. And I'll hit enter once, twice to complete that command. All right, so um, we are done with this ring. I do want to say that things like, you know, offsetting the sizing circle, if we bring back, we'll go back into the front view here. I'll hide the ring for a minute. Um, deciding to set this one millimeter out, deciding to move these points, 0.5 millimeters away from the line in both directions, deciding on six twists and on a pipe diameter of 1.8 millimeters. Those were all, you know, the result of trial and error. So I tried this several different ways uh, over perhaps 5, 10, 15 minutes and this was the what I liked best. So there's some trial and error here that isn't part of the tutorial. And I just wanted to make that clear. So we are done with the model. I'm going to delete all of these curves. We'll bring the ring back and we will go into... I wouldn't normally delete the curves. This is just uh, so that you know, you don't see them in render view. I could have also have hidden them. That would have worked as well. In a production situation, I would not delete the curves particularly. Uh, I would just uh, hide them so that they don't show up in the render. Okay, we'll need to make a material. That's not too difficult to do. We'll just select on the ring, click on the material tab, click on this little plus sign. We'll make a metal material. And uh, you can go with this uh, default material that pops up. You can just drag it on there. It's a kind of a silvery material. Um, if it's a little too bright, you can click on the color down here, click on color picker. You can lower it like this if you want, make it darker. Or you can come here to this drop down and set it to custom color list and click on silver. And it'll, it'll set the color to that. You could also go with a gold color if you want. You can, if you're on the custom color list, you can click on gold and then it has yellow in parentheses. Uh, you don't want this one. This is kind of too orangey. I mean, you can if you want, but this is probably a little closer to 14 karat gold right here. And you can also adjust that if you're not satisfied with it. You can uh, click here and go to the hue saturation value. Well, I don't like the wheel. My favorite is the sliders, but you can click on whichever you prefer and you can adjust the uh, color here. You could give it a little more saturation perhaps, maybe tone the, bring the value down a little. Okay, uh, and you could also mess with, the, if you would not want a pure white background, you could maybe set it to a gradient and maybe set this to a, a dark gray and maybe keep this at white at the bottom. But you can just keep uh, fooling, you can uh, experiment with, with that type of thing under the render tab. You could do a solid color if you want. You could do a darker gray. I'm just trying to make it pop better. You could do solid black. But uh, that's just something you could experiment with. But we are done with the model. That's, uh, that's what it would look like there. Thank you so much guys uh, for watching. If you uh, like this video, please give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And if you like this content in general, consider subscribing to my channel. And I hope to see you guys in future videos.